Well, hissed Blue Star, her face only a mouse length from his now. Lionheart remained silent as he towered over Rusty. He flattened his ears and crouched under the Golden Warrior's stare. His fur prickled uncomfortably. I am no threat to your clan, he mewed, looking down at his trembling paws. You threaten our clan when you take our food, yelled Blue Star. You have plenty of food in your two-leg nest already. You come here only to hunt for sport, but we hunt to survive. The truth of the warrior queen's words pierced Rusty like a black thorn, and suddenly he understood her anger. He stopped trembling, sat up, and straightened his ears. He raised his eyes to meet hers. I had not thought of it that way before. I am sorry, he mewed solemnly. I will not hunt here again. Blue Star let her hackles fall and signaled to Lionheart to step back. You are an unusual kitty pet, Rusty, she meowed. Graypaw's sigh of relief made Rusty's ears twitch. He heard the approval of Blue Star's voice and noticed as she swapped a meaningful glance with Lionheart. The look made him curious. What flashed between the two warriors? Quietly, he asked, Is survival here really so hard? Our territory covers only part of the forest, answered Blue Star. We compete with other clans for what we have, and this year, New Leaf means prey is scarce. Is your clan very big? Rusty meowed, his eyes wide. Big enough, replied Blue Star. Our territory can support us, but there's no prey left over. Are you all warriors then? Rusty mewed. Blue Star's guarded answers were just making him more and more curious. Lionheart answered him. Some are warriors. Some are too young, or too old, or too busy caring for kids to hunt. And you all live and share prey together? Rusty murmured in awe, thinking a little guiltily of his own easy, selfish life. Blue Star looked again at Lionheart. The golden tabby stared back at her steadily. At last she returned her gaze to Rusty and meowed, Perhaps you should find out these things for yourself. Would you like to join ThunderClan? Rusty was so surprised, he couldn't speak. Blue Star went on, If you did, you would train with Graypaw to become a clan warrior. But kitty pets can't be warriors, Graypaw blurted out. They don't have warrior blood. A sad look clouded Blue Star's eyes. Warrior blood, she echoed with a sigh. Too much of that has been spilled lately. Blue Star fell silent and Lionheart meowed. Blue Star is only offering you a training, young kit. There is no guarantee you would become a full warrior. It might prove too difficult for you. After all, you are used to a comfortable life. Rusty was stung by Lionheart's words. He swung his head around to face the golden tabby. Why offer me the chance, then? But it was Blue Star who answered. You are right to question our motives, young one. The fact is, ThunderClan needs more warriors. Understand that Blue Star does not make this offer lightly, warned Lionheart. If you wish to train with us, we'll have to take you into our clan. You must either live with us and respect our ways, or return to your two-leg place and never come back. You cannot live with a paw in each world. A cool breeze stirred under the undergrowth, ruffling Rusty's fur. He shivered, not with the cold, but with the excitement at the incredible possibilities opening up in front of him. Are you wondering if it's worth giving up your comfortable kitty pet life? asked Blue Star gently. But you do realize the price you will pay for your warmth and food. Rusty looked at her puzzled. Surely his encounter with these cats had proven to him just how easy and luxurious his life was. I can tell that you are still a tom, Blue Star added, despite the two lake stench that still clings to your fur. What do you mean, still a tom? You haven't yet been taken by the two lakes to see the cutter, meowed Blue Star gravely. You would have been very different then, not quite as keen to fight a clan cat, I suspect. Rusty was confused. He suddenly thought of Henry, who had become fat and lazy since his visit to the vet. Was that what Blue Star meant by the cutter? The clan may not be able to offer you such easy food or warmth, continued Blue Star. In the season of leaf bear, nights in the forest can be cruel. The clan will demand a great loyalty and hard work. You will be expected to protect the clan with your life if necessary. And there are many mouths to feed, but the rewards are great. You will remain a tom. You will be trained in the ways of the wild. You will learn what it is to be a real cat. The strength and the fellowship of the clan will always be with you, even when you hunt alone. Rusty's head reeled. Blue Star seemed to be offering him the life he had lived so many times and so tantalizingly in his dreams, but could he live like that for real? Lionheart interrupted his thoughts. Come, Blue Star, let us not waste any more time here. We must be ready to join the other patrol at Moon High. Tiger Claw will wonder what has become of us. 
He stood up and flicked his tail expectantly. Wait, Rusty meowed. Can I think about your offer? Blue Star looked at him for a long moment and nodded. Lionheart will be here tomorrow at Sun High, she told him. Give him your answer then. Blue Star murmured a low signal, and in a single movement, three cats turned and disappeared into the undergrowth. Rusty blinked. He stared, excited, uncertain. A past the ferns that encircled him, through the canopy of leaves, to the stars that glittered into the clear sky. The scent of the clan cat still hung heavily in the evening air, and as Rusty turned and headed for home, he felt a strange sensation inside him, tugging him back into the depths of the forest. His fur pricked deliciously in the light wind, and the rustling of leaves seemed to whisper his name into the shadows.